Hi, this is David. Today we're going to talk about transactable containers. This refers to a solution that Microsoft partners can offer through the Azure marketplace. Using transactable containers, a partner can bundle up one or more containers and offer them as a complete solution to their customer. That solution is based on Azure Kubernetes service, and although the partner has control over the configuration of these containers and what's inside of them, those containers will be deployed and will run in the Azure tenant of the customer. In this video and in the following videos, I'm going to walk you through the labs that are published by the Azure Marketplace right here, and I'll place a link to these labs in the show notes so that you can follow along. Now be aware that this offering, is, this offering is currently in preview, so it's possible that some things might change after this video goes live. Also, in order to complete the labs, you must register as a Microsoft partner. And I have a blog post right here that I'll also put in the show notes that walks you through how to sign up as a Microsoft partner. It's free to register and you can get started in just a few minutes. Let's get started on these labs. The first thing we need to do is to get the labs from the GitHub repository. And that's right up here on the labs page. Just click in the top right corner. We can see it all right here. Now we could fork this and uh, do it all through Git commands, but actually we're not going to push anything back. We just want to get a copy of the labs and all the documentation and all the files here. So under code, we have this download zip. And that should be fine. It's about 26 megabytes zipped up. Let's go ahead and open that up when it's done downloading. There we go. And I will extract it to a folder that I have called uh, C backslash GCast backslash transactable containers right there. And here it is. I can close the zip file now and delete it. This is where I'm going to start working in this Mastering the Marketplace main. We will return to these files in a little bit. For now, let's go back to the lab, which is here. Click the back arrow. And down here, we can see lab number one, prepare a container deployment. Let's click on that. And the very first step, getting started, click the link or I can scroll down to it getting started. It's all about creating an Azure container registry. So I'm going to do that. And I have here, I've logged into portal.azure.com. I've logged in with my partner credentials and I want to create a resource. I want to create a, an Azure container registry. So I'm going to search for I'll hit the plus button. I'll say container registry. Search for that. And open it up as a little description of what it is. And then I'll click the create button. It brings up this dialogue and I'll specify. All right, I want a resource group and I create a brand new one. I'm going to call it GCast ACRRG. OK, uh, East US is fine. Um, I don't really need the availability zones for this, but if you want to have a little bit more redundancy, you can do that. Um, SKU, I'm going to take this is just a demo, so I'm going to take the cheapest SKU that's available here, the basic one. Click on review and create, and it tells me validation failed. Let's find out why. Something over here is bad. Oh, I didn't give a name for the registry. GCAST ACR for Azure Container Registry. There we go. And this doesn't take very long. It did it, validation didn't take very long, but if I click on create, it takes probably a minute or so, I think, to create this registry. Let's just go ahead. And wait for this to come up. And there it is. And now I can click on go to resource. Here is my Azure container registry. Let's go back to the lab and look down here. And we want to capture some information about that the login server, the username, and the password. So, what we're going to do here is go down to the access keys section of our Azure Container Registry right here. And we're gonna enable the admin user. That's a pretty good username right there. In fact, I think I have a uh, text file open, empty text file open right 
over here that I want to save all that information in. So I'll say uh, admin user is that password. Uh, I didn't actually create that password, but if I had, I probably would have set it to that one right there. Right there. What else did we want to do? Let's go back to the lab and see the oh the login server, which is at the top here. Uh, login server right there. So let's grab that and this little copy button here. And how about that? Login server. Paste that in. And I might as well say registry name as well. I don't. It's part of the login server, so it's probably not that important for me to know, but it's always good to have. And I'll hang on to this thing here. In fact, why don't I save it in in here? I'll say uh, a Azure Container Registry notes, put it right there, so I can find it later on. Now let's go back to the lab. Let's scroll down to this next section here. It talks about a working folder. So we want to copy from here into a new location. For example, begin and then rename it. And that's where we're going to do our work in here. So let's go ahead and do that. Open up. Folder where all our things are. And just to make it a little easier, we want to put these side by side and say we want to go into the path of the repo, which is right there under docs, under container. And this is not quite right. It should be actually there's labs and then lab one, Con prepare container deployment, this one. So it looks like there's a typo in here. And this is the folder begin. So let's copy that. And then we'll put it somewhere else. In this case, why don't we put it way down in C G cast right here. Paste it right there. There it is. And then it says rename it to container dash labs. So that's what we'll do. And this becomes our working folder right here. This one's here just in case we want to uh, find out where we started. If we screw up, we can also go back to the repository to do that. And that's what we're going to do. And in fact, if I go in here, and open up Visual Studio Code or any other IDE. Right here, then from here, I can open a folder and the folder I want to open is GCAST Transactable Containers. Wait, no, it's, I'm sorry, Container Labs right here. That's the one I want to open. Select, select, select that. And of course I trust the authors because uh, it's from the internet and the internet is full of kittens. Who doesn't trust kittens? Now that we have our working folder set up, let's go on to the next step in the lab. So that's right here, prepare solution images. So the first thing we wanna do is open a text editor. I'm gonna use the text editor in Visual Studio Code right here open up code docker file right there it's got one line in it and what it tells us is that we should uh, add the following code to the docker file taking care not to delete the first line that's the only line so let's go ahead and grab all this stuff here copy it paste it into here and file save that's good right there next step says Ensure the Docker desktop is running. You can download Docker desktop. Really easy to search for it here. Very first link in Bing is Docker desktop. I can download it for Windows or for Apple or whatever. Um, uh, I've already got it running. It's right over here. We do have to make sure it's running so the Docker commands will work. Let's go ahead and close that. And then we're going to run the following cast. We want to make sure we're in the right folder. And then we want to run docker build dash t and then the name of the login server that which we copied from the from uh, the the azure container registry slash to do js colon v1 that's the name of the container that we're going to create so let's go ahead and do that let's go into uh our notepad here 
And you know, there is our login server, GCAST ACR, ACE dash, ACR, Azure CR.io. And this command, let me just go ahead and copy it here. Put it in Notepad, make it a little bit easier for me. And then I can replace this bit here with the actual name of the ACR login server right there. And I think I'm missing the dot at the very end, which says the current directory. So let's go ahead and do that. First, we're going to change to the Container Labs code folder here in Visual Studio. I want to go to the command prompt right here. And here, why don't I see that view? Not the command palette, but this terminal window here. And um, in here, you know, by default, you may see this in PowerShell. I want to make sure that I'm in Ubuntu. Now I'm on a Windows machine, so I have to use WSL to get to Ubuntu. And you can see the folder on that. It's, it's been translated from C colon backslash GCast, et cetera, to um, this right here, Container Lab. So I want to make sure that I'm in the right folder. What did it say again? It was uh, the code folder, Container Labs code folder. So there's Container Labs, there's the code folder, and I could do an LS to say there's the, I'm already in Container Labs, so I just want to do CD code right there. Okay, there I am right here, and these are the files that uh, I have in here, and I wanted to do this command that I just put into Notepad right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to build the Docker file that we've just modified. And there we are done. Now I should be able to see this. By reshooting Docker image LS. And there's the, I just created this to do JS colon V1. It's right there. It's an image locally that's not yet running. Next thing we want to do is to do the same thing, creating a, another image called Mongo. And rather than doing this from a Docker file. We're just going to pull it down from a repository, from the Docker repository. So let's do that. Let's do Docker pull Mongo latest. Copy that. Let me close this. Make it a little easier to see right there. Docker pull Mongo latest. Pulls it down from Docker Hub, and this is the latest version of a Mongo container. And then we want to do this Docker tag, Mongo latest. And once again, we're going to push it to our ACR server. So I'll go back into Notepad again and do this. And once again, I'm going to. Replace that with this right here. So right here, that's good. Put that in here. Okay, and now when I now when I do Docker image ls, I see that I have two images. I have the to do js colon v1 and Mongo colon latest, and they're both pointed to gcast acr azure cr dot io. For the next step, we want to start running these containers locally. The containers will be based on the image that we just created. Uh, and we'll run them within a network. So let's create that network, this command right here. Docker network create to do dash net. There it is. I can see it as Docker network. LS. Uh, this, well, this one down here, the other ones are built in. And if we go back to here, then we want to run these two commands here. One will start the uh, container based on a MongoDB image, and the other one will start one based on the Azure, on the to-do image, rather. Uh, so the MongoDB has, has a database, and the other one, the to-do, has a web server. Let's copy those into Notepad, because you can see there's some stuff that we need to add to this right here. So. There's the Mongo one, and here is the to do one. And if you notice, it says specify an admin username and password of your choice. So let's go ahead and just make one up here and then we'll record it. So the, the Mongo, the password to log into Mongo, 
I'm going to call it Mongo user. In fact, let me just document that up here. Mongo user is that, and password is going to be, we'll call it, how about uh, PASS at word one. Let's try that. Secure password. I'm going to delete these afterwards anyway, so it's probably okay. Right here. Okay, and this one here, we do need to tell it the first of all, the path to Mongo to do here is right there. It's running on port 27017, which is specified up here. And um, then we want to tell this one, point it to our Azure container registry right here. So copy that and replace this with the login server name. All right, let's do that. So the first one is the Mongo. Right there, run that. And if I say Docker container LS, it shows me I have one of those now. Also Docker PS is just a shortcut for that. And then if I go back and do the other one, this is the web server, which is to do. Right there, I've created that. And there's my containers that are running. There are two of them running right now. And if we want to see it actually in action, let's go to localhost 3000 right here because you notice this is running on port 3000. And you can see there it is. There's the Azure to do list. So let's go ahead and enter some tasks. It's just a, a list of tasks, and we'll start with wake up. That's my first task of the day. Second task is get out of bed. And if you have are old enough to remember the Beatles, then you know that the next thing to do is to drag a comb across my head. And this is a full functioning application here that uh, you can mark these tasks as complete, delete them if you decide they're not really worth doing and so on. This is a good stopping point. Lab one takes a lot longer than the other labs in this series. So I'm going to pause the video here and continue lab one in the next video. This is David. Thank you for watching.